Welcome back everyone. theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2024. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante, my co-host, co-founder. It's our 14th year covering HP and HPE Discover. Got two great guests here, unpacking the big news with NVIDIA and HP, the strategic relationship, a deep relationship. Neil McDonald, Executive Vice President, HPC and AI for HPE, and Bob Petty, Vice President and General Manager for Enterprise Platforms at NVIDIA. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on, and I think we had a great preamble that wasn't on camera, but I think we had some good content coming out. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no, Mike, glad to be here. So I got to say, this is a unprecedented times. The world's being changed by generative AI. The new platform shift, it's different. Tokens, neural networks, vectors, these are the terms that Jensen's talking about, NIMS, a whole nother architecture's here, and you guys announced the partnership between NVIDIA Neil, this is significant. It's not just, it's not a Barney deal. This is not a deal, it's just a strategic relationship. There's, there's a profound impact. Go to market, there's technology. Take us through real quick the relationship and then we'll get into it. So the announcement that we made this week is NVIDIA AI Computing by HPE. And our focus is really accelerating the next wave of deployment of generative AI. We have this technology that's going to change the world and impact all kinds of processes inside businesses because fundamentally what it's about is productivity. We believe that every enterprise is going to become to some extent driven by generative AI or they're going to become obsolete because they're going to be beaten by the competitors who do. So the challenge is that yeah. as great as all of this amazing innovation and technology is right now, enterprises have different needs. There are lots of solutions out there that are really reference architectures that puts a huge burden on enterprise customers to curate and integrate different pieces of technology at the hardware level, and then to curate and integrate all of the layers in the data stack and in the model stack before they can ever get to the experimentation on use cases and capture the competitive benefits of productivity. So the wonderful thing that we're engaged on with our great partners here at NVIDIA is delivering a co-developed portfolio of products and solutions that enable enterprises to accelerate that journey because we take care of that for them. They can take these technologies, deploy them in a few clicks and less than 30 seconds and get going on their journey of discovery and transformation yep. leveraging generative AI. Bob, talk about the NVIDIA piece because we've been covering you guys for a while and, and your, your conference, the AI systems were front and center. I mean, it's a data center in a box. It's a huge monster machine, but the appetite for generative AI is not just in the broad, bigger market. It goes down into the enterprise and it's different, but there's still huge demand. Massive demand, you know. Historically, it's, it's been in the hyperscaler market because that's where things have been trained. Large language models have been trained, chat GPT and the like. But the enterprise is, is where that intelligence will be gathered and, and, and obtained. And they require a different model. You're, you know, there's there data privacy things to consider, there are uh, uh, GDPR things that could be considered, data governance and the like. As you move from hyperscaler technology into the enterprise, you'll still do fine tuning. And so our, our GPU and our CPU, GPU assortment covers, and what we announced here as part of the HPE Private Cloud for AI, is a slew of products from small, medium, large and extra large to address these different use cases. Um, there'll be some training done, there'll be fine tuning done where you take an existing uh, LLM or small LLM and you fine tune it for your particular industry or your, your particular corporation. Probably most importantly is where you get into retrieval augmented generation where you add your specific data to it uh, and then the final step is, is in that inference process is true latency optimized inferencing for customer assistance, digital avatars, uh, AI co-pilots for code assist. But uh, the hopper systems and the Grace Hopper right. systems that we've announced here with HPE are state of the art. Uh, will be time to market with HPE <laughs> when we're shipping Blackwell uh, next year. Jensen's already talked about Rubin in 20, 2026, and we're looking forward to uh, the next couple of years with our partners here at HPE. One year cycle. Yeah. Um, you know, John points out, and John's the only person I know who times Jensen mm -hmm. at, at events, <laughs> uh, and other than GTC where he spoke for hours, he was 25 minutes mm -hmm. at, uh, in the sphere, the other day, which is a new record, double roughly what you see <laughs> at other shows. But the thing about Jensen is he always brings something new mm -hmm. to these shows. And we watch all his yeah, videos and it's like, wow, he's always got a new take. And this time it was three ingredients needed for AI, the model, the compute, and the data. And he, he, then he talked about NIMS and Nemo and of course, yep. you know, CUDA and other software, yeah. all three layers. 
So really, you know, again, always brings new mm -hmm. concepts. How do those fit into what you guys announced? Well, any form of generative AI relies on data. And enterprise data is on-prem. It's on-prem for reasons of confidentiality or protecting IP. It's on-prem for regulatory reasons. It's on-prem for any number of concerns. And so any generative AI endeavor that's really going to transform business processes in the enterprise has a natural gravity to on-prem for part of that architecture. And as you know, we've long held that the world is going to be hybrid. And it's been borne out. And nowhere is it being borne out more than in generative AI. So the challenge then becomes, how do you make that easy for the enterprise to deal with? And yeah. that's where the three pillars come in. When you think about the computing stack, yeah. this isn't about taking an accelerator and a server and putting them together and then putting that together with network and all the other pieces. Yeah. It's not a kit that has to be assembled like so many other offers yeah. in the market today. What we've done is co-developed a turnkey integrated solution that integrates that compute stack including the storage that's needed and the ability to ingest data across a disparate enterprise into Gen AI yeah, initiatives, yeah. leveraging our data fabrics. But it's more than that. You need to be able to observe this infrastructure. You need to be able to curate and life cycle manage it. So we've done all of that too. But that's only the compute stack. When you think about the, um, the data that feeds into it, that's also part of what we've yeah. delivered. And most critically for the enterprise, it's about the models. So Bob, maybe you can add a little bit about yeah. the model stack and how we've integrated profoundly into Great. what we've done yeah. with yeah. Private Cloud AI. Absolutely, as we, as we move from this instruction-led computing world that we've been in into intention-led computing, those three, three stacks are key. are key. The compute stack, again, not just GPU, but an integrated, approach to looks at latency to data, and latency between CPU and GPU, Neil's covered that greatly. Uh, the data stack uh, partnership, GreenLake for storage, um, all of the great storage that we have, integrated Nemo retriever. You know, the, the slowest horse in the race is the one that's going to determine the length of the race. And if that's a query that someone has and they need timely feedback, so knowing where the data is, making sure that it's guardrail protected, that's part of the data stack. All of that is built into NVIDIA AI Enterprise that they've incorporated into their stack. And then the model stack is really based around uh, NVIDIA inference microservices. These essentially are the runtime for models. We have a slew of models covering a variety of uh, enterprise use cases across multiple industries, which is why Jensen refers yeah. to this as the next industrial revolution. You know, we started out with uh, uh, the ability to detect, um, moved into healthcare and then trying to detect cancer, look for differences. Yeah. Now we're, we're actually able to take multiple data sources and predict, and that's where that more and more uh, intelligence is extracted. So these NIMs, these, these containerized models, can come from anywhere. People can download them from wherever, from wherever they are. But we have a nightly NIM AI factory at NVIDIA that we build, continue to build these models, tune, test, optimize. We have replicated all of the servers and the systems that are part of NVIDIA AI computing by HPE. We test them out there, so our enterprise customers, our collective customers know they're getting the latest state-of-the-art models. And so models are the key. They need to get to the data and they need to run on it on the infrastructure that's going to let them truly run at performance for time to insight, time to yeah. value. I want to dig. I want to dig into that because um, this is a really nuanced point, but it's super important. NIMS from NVIDIA, that's your inference yep. microservice, which is great. That means that clients could build their own models. Yes. So this is a key part. This is not, there's other model opportunities out there, open source or whatnot, so that's, that's important to point out. I want to bring this up because all the people we talk to in our research and our conversations is, yeah, they use the, the proprietary and or large open source models for things, some, some content, some queries, some retrieval, but when you talk about their data, they want a simple and easy way to stand up infrastructure, kind of like the old cloud days. I want to mm -hmm. do a SaaS app, I don't need, I just spin up credit card and I get right. some services. They want the same thing for their data because that's their crown jewel. Yep, exactly. And so take us through what you guys see there because that is different. It might be smaller, it might be different sizes, but that's a key part of their IP. And the workloads are end to end. So you know a couple things. Yeah. I know my data and I know my workload. Well, How does that factor into this? Well, that's kind of the key for the enterprise because a large language model with 
some level of general intelligence is one thing, but if you apply that in your business processes, you're not going to get the results you want in terms of quality because it doesn't have the specific intelligence about your business or your industry. So this is why for enterprises to be successful with generative AI, they have to pursue either fine tuning a model based on their own data, which they're going to do on-prem, or leveraging retrieval augmented generation, where the generation process is leveraging that data from inside the enterprise. But to do that, enterprise data is very fragmented. And yep. so that's why we've integrated into yep. private cloud AI our data fabric that enables you to pull that together from those disparate yeah, sources yeah. in order to underpin that work. But that tuning or RAG or the development of small specialized models in that company or industry is really critical to yeah. get the level of impact that's and needed. And I think that's the, the transformation that we're seeing. You know, you're not going to use ChatGPT4 to optimize your supply chain. Um, it might give you some hints, but there are hints that it's scraped from the internet, right? You <laughs> and want everything your, on the internet's it, true, right? Yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want your data, you want your SAP system, or Oracle system, your Salesforce system, you want all of your, you know, all of your information to be a part of that model. And some of that is done via you know, RAG, but a lot of it is done to an industry-specific model that is developed, um, that we see this today in, in yeah. climate, um, in geospatial large language models, in financial large language models. Yeah. Um, and when I say large, yeah. I'm not talking about trillions of parameters, but billions or hundreds of billions of parameters. Those, that's, the, by industry you'll see that, and we are seeing that happen. Um, to, to your point, yeah. that's the transformation. So I take that industry specific one, then I make it uh, corporation specific yeah. with my semantics, my words, so that when it goes to get data that is in, in my databases, it, it can make the correlation. It, it has the same semantics, the, yeah. same, the same language, the same set of information. So that's the big trans transformation and that's part of what a NVIDIA AI Enterprise, HP AI Essentials, and the NIMS are meant to do, is help, help companies go from these yeah truly large language models down to models that they're going to work with on a regular basis to yeah. improve you their You mentioned RAG, obviously retrieval augmentation generation is what it means for the folks who don't know what it means, but that's a lot of text. There's also um, tokens can be used for multimodal. So you got oh, wow. images, PDFs, X-rays, I mean, a lot of DNA, I mean, yep, the non-text. So that's an important point, but again, that's part of the new system, which brings up me to my next question, which is, can you guys uh, highlight or illuminate the difference between old school data processing, which I could do in the cloud, by the way. Mm -hmm. Cloud's great for data processing. Put data in the cloud and process it. This is not data processing. No. It's neural network, it's a different data source, either fragmented or different data states. Scope that problem and opportunity. How do you guys look at that? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tee, it up, yeah, right. tee it up here if I can. This gets back to this, um, <laughs> I don't want to call it a sound bite, but it's really important. Instruction-led computing means you the programmers have an idea of what they're trying to find. And they, and they go through the code in an order of if then else to see what's there with the hopeful outcome of coming up with something important and that's served us well to date. Intention-led computing goes yeah. well beyond that, right? And so it's not so much about um, uh, how I'm going to crunch data, it's about what I'm trying to do and AI, AI learns that based on, based on the questions that you're probing the model with based on the data that you're exposing it to, um, it, will, it will not only answer your questions, but it understands what your second question will likely be. It's learning to write code on its own, and so it knows your intentions, and we've seen this time and time again for the years that we've been working in with AI and NVIDIA. We are constantly surprised at what it can do. We may, we may train it to do one thing, and we turn it on to a different modality, and we're, we're shocked. We're shocked. And so that's the true power, is not just getting the answers that you, that you want, but getting the answers that maybe you should be asking, right? Um, knowing that your, your intended goal is to save lives, improve the climate, improve the supply chain, increase sales, yeah. whatever it may be. And you, you know, think about you know, an enterprise example. You got a B2B business. You're responding to requests for quotes, requests for proposals, right? You, in an, in an instruction-led world, the way we would run all of our IT in the past, you try to come up with a perfect algorithm to write all yeah. of that. In an intention-led world, you leverage HP Private Cloud AI as part of the NVIDIA AI computing by HP, and you take your database of all the responses you've ever generated in your business, 
and then you have the system generate your next response. So by doing that, what have you done? You made your sales teams and your response teams, your pursuit teams, vastly more productive so you can cover more opportunities. You've gotten the best practices out of what's worked for you in the past, the deals you've won, the deals you've lost, and you've factored that intelligence yeah. in a systematic way into the business. So that's transformational. If you're competing with another yeah. organization who's trying to do this all by hand, you're going to be faster to respond, you're going to be better at leveraging your best practice, you're going to win more. And that's the power of transformation. The challenge is, how do you enable enterprises to do that without having to become gurus in the compute stack, the data stack, and the model yeah. stack? Because the architecture is so different from traditional enterprise IT. Very complex. And that's why we're so excited about what we're doing together with NVIDIA. The reason why this is so important, this message that you're sending about solutions, <clears throat> is that cycles are compressing, everything's compressing. And I want to get your perspective on this. Kind of a multi-part uh, question, but I'll start with one. So, we're seeing a one-year cadence rhythm, I think Jensen calls it, right. right? H100s are becoming a little bit more plentiful, and then, you know, can't wait to get Blackwell. We already see Ruben announced. What does that mean from your standpoint, in terms of managing the life cycles, which you used to two, maybe it was even extended, tape outs were stretching out to two to three, sometimes even four years. Now it's like this one year rhythm. What does well, that mean for you? Well, the, the first thing that it means is uh, aligning the amazing engineering teams at HPE rigorously with NVIDIA's cadence. And uh, we're thrilled to have uh, announced our first Gen 12 servers here in the HPE ProLiant line, which are based on NVIDIA superchips. Um, so you, what you can expect to see moving forward is incredibly tight alignment on that development. And we're committed to ensuring that HP and NVIDIA are together, time to, time to market, on all of those transitions. So that's the first thing that it means. The second thing it means is thinking beyond the system. Sometimes in traditional enterprise IT, we've thought of it like a server. It's a box. The architecture is not about the individual nodes anymore. It's not even about the individual accelerators anymore. It's about the whole system architecture that brings together all of the capabilities in that compute stack, the data stack, and the model stack that you need to be effective with generative AI. So another shift here, both for um, uh, our partnership and our collaboration, but also for our enterprise customers, is thinking at that system level in a much, much more profound and cohesive way. Bob? Yeah, and I, I think what will tie these, these architectures together in a way that customers don't feel like they're going to be missing out is, is CUDA compatibility. Um, you know, we're, we'll guarantee that what works today will work on Blackwell, will work on Ruben, and, and run faster, do more, do better. Um, and in working in concert uh, early on, you know, before we're releasing Blackwell and Ruben systems, we'll be testing out all of the software, not just our models and, and CUDA, but also all the HPE software. Um, and you know, the, from a lifecycle management standpoint, one, one, of, the, one of the reasons we, we partner with HPE, besides their broad reach, you know, they've got financial options to make it easy for people to transition. Um, you know, pe pe you know, some people might want Ruben today. You always want the latest thing. Yeah. But do you want to improve your business today, or do you want to wait to 2026? And so it's important that A, they know the code's going to run, the code will run, it's compatible, we'll continue to optimize, and they know that there are financial options to uh, not only expand. I doubt that they'll replace those hopper systems in the Ruben time frame, they'll just add Ruben. <laughs> well, we have new law, we had Moore's law, now we have Jensen's law, which yeah. is spend more, save more. But I want to <laughs> ask you, so after GTC, we took the, um, the chart that Jensen had, and we you know, did the calculation, 1,000 X improvement in eight years, we superimposed Moore's law, which was 100 X in 10 years, and you guys actually stole that in Taiwan, our chart. It wasn't yeah. really our chart, you did yeah. your own it, version. It, it was a great the, chart. The reason I asked that, and we understand, <laughs> thank you, we understand <laughs> the, the importance of systems. Yep. Okay, but it does come back to that core, that GPU, we need bigger GPUs. And when you look at Blackwell and what you did with NVLink, uh, and to keep that lead, everybody say, okay, the most valuable company in the world, they're going to get all this competition, how long is that lead? When you look at Blackwell and the things that you did, I'd love to ask you, if you can answer, most people from NVIDIA are like super smart, smart, smart guys, as we say in Boston. So maybe you can answer this, maybe you can't, but we noticed reading about it, learning about it, that you, you had a little trick in there. You dialed down the floating point to, to four 
point granularity as opposed to eight point, which saves power, you know, it saves money, brilliant, and it's the same TSM process. Right. So we're like, wow, what happens when NVIDIA moves to a new node and then, and then dials things back up, back up? So you have a lot of flexibility there. What can you tell us about you know, what's coming, that roadmap, uh, without you know, obviously giving away too much? Yeah, I, I'm not going to give away too much, um, but you know, the, the, the level, um, whether you need N4, N8, FP8, FP16, FP32, depends on the workload. Our R&D group is doing dramatic results. We're getting, you know, what used to require FP16 now runs in N4 at the same level of accuracy. This is important um, because now I can, I can fit you know, more data, larger models uh, into a, a, a frame buffer size that I, uh, I, I need to run that model. So I may not need you know, the hyperscale level of model, I can, I can put it into an extra large uh, HPE private cloud for AI system. So when we'll make trade-offs every generation, we do this historically. Um, the need for a floating point in supercomputing was significant and the need to reserve space for FP64, which we'll always have, or FP32 calculations we'll always have. When you get into the tensor world, the, the AI world, you want to try to squeeze as far as you can. If, if we could get to an int one, <laughs> uh, an wow. int one level, I'm so. not saying we would, but if we could, <laughs> we would, why wouldn't you, right? If we could m make the same prediction in the same or faster time frame with less precision using up uh, less, less memory, you're going to do that. And we'll continue to innovate that way. Will there be some things that, that hope that you know, some yeah. of that floating point was there? Um, yes, but they'll still run faster. Um, it's just the AI will run you know, 100 times faster. Yeah. And so Neil, you have to obviously understand the roadmap mm -hmm. and put the right strategic fit yep. for your portfolio yeah. and you got to do that in a much faster time frame. It's a fascinating dynamic. Well, it's, it's, it's a wonderful time to be in the systems world because yeah. there yeah. Uh, is such an incredible rate of innovation coming from our partners at NVIDIA, and we're thrilled to be there, time to market yeah. with every one of these transitions. Yeah. The key though is if we languish in the detail of exactly what's in a piece of silicon, we're having the wrong conversation yeah. with enterprises because we shouldn't be burdening customers with having to understand yeah. the whole technical detail of the stack. That's the power of our focus and our approach. Yeah. They're just going to have access to more performant, more capable systems that lets them deploy a larger yeah. number of generative AI use cases inside their yeah. enterprise. We, we don't but want them thinking about in yeah, for You've got to extract, exactly. right. right. extract that, right. but we, we still want to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think the other thing that we, we, we need to talk yeah. about though is that not just as the architecture chain and the structure of how these systems put together changing, yeah. but we're also heading into a very, very different power regime yeah. in yeah. addition yes. to the efficiency. Yeah. So maybe Bob, you should share some of the color on that. Yeah, so um, much like we look to optimize model accuracy by reducing you know, the, the number of uh, bytes required, uh, we're, we're taking power up. It's just, this is the way it's going to work. We, we need bigger and bigger power systems. You saw that from, from Hopper to Blackwell. L let's assume that that will, will continue. Um, that doesn't mean that you know, we're going to run out of power because while we may be taking power up 2x or 3x, if the performance is going up well beyond that, it still is a more efficient system. So if we can improve, say, Llama 3 70B 5x with our NIMS running on a system today at a certain power level, um, when that power goes up and you get that 5x improvement, it still, it still is going to be saving you money. The more you buy, the more you save. So in the same power envelope, you're going to get more yeah. done. And so, um, but with power coming up, uh, with power constantly going up um, to produce more uh, intelligence to produce more intelligence from the data that it's being fed. Um, we, we do know that there's only so much space and so yeah. many data centers. And so that's one of the main reasons we partnered with HPE on this announcement is they're experts in liquid cooling. Um, uh, whether it's 70% you know, liquid cooled or direct that's liquid right. cooled. So we're confident in taking the power up because it's still going to be a profitable yeah. uh, um, formula for our customers. They're still going to save money. And especially with the liquid cooling piece, they'll save even more. Mm. Uh, from a power standpoint, yeah. you guys can reuse that, that heat that's pulled out and, yeah. and you know, yeah. heat buildings in winters and the like. So um, we're, we're confident that yeah. um, people say GPUs are, are power hungry. Um, 
I think customers are, are information hungry. And intelligence Customer, hungry. And, right. Intelligence yeah. hungry. Yeah. And so we're feeding that intelligence hungry uh, with, with our- They're outcome hungry. hungry. They want their outcomes they want. Well, yeah. exactly, and the key to this at the end of the day is we're moving into a regime that's going to have to yeah. be 100% liquid yeah. cooled. And in that world where you're multi-kilowatt sockets, there's an alternative. Yeah. At HPE, we're blessed to have all of the experience <laughs> from decades of Cray building 100% liquid cooled systems. You can see them here on the show floor at Discover yeah. with the Venado system at Los Alamos that yep. Jensen and Antonio yeah, yeah. inaugurated just a few short weeks ago. Okay. So we're really thrilled yeah. that all of that experience is coming to bear right at the heart yeah. of this enterprise generative AI journey. Dare I say democratization of supercomputing, but I won't say, I just said <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I think that last conversation about the getting into, and into the details proves and proves that we're, the engineering's different, but by design has to be different. We're in a different world. You guys take care of that on behalf of the customer. So I have to ask on our last few minutes, minute we have so left, on the go-to-market on the go to market together, this is a significant part of the relationship. Yep, very much so. Could you quickly talk about how that's going to work? Antonio was here on theCUBE, yep. the CEO of HP said, we're going to go as one company. Jensen was texting him last night, they had a great time on stage. Mm -hmm. What is the go-to-market? Obviously, we saw the simplicity, four clicks, you're up and running. Mm -hmm. What is the message? What's the comp? What, who's getting paid? You guys holding hands together as a joint solution. What's the go-to-market? So the first thing that we're doing is we're training and certifying our entire enterprise sales force on NVIDIA technologies as part of NVIDIA AI computing by HPE so that we can go bring that benefit of private cloud AI to all of our enterprise customers. But we're not stopping there. We're also enabling certification and training in our channel community, which is such a core set of partners for both of us in expanding reach and being able to to bring these competitive benefits in a democratized way yeah. to the broad sweep of enterprises. And then, of course, we're working with NVIDIA in the field. Bob? Yeah, it, we, we start with the product group. So my, my product group is actually just focused on the enterprise and, and just focused on the OEMs because of that huge opportunity. Most of the AI is going to yeah. be there. Um, so we'll continue to make sure we're innovating at that level versus yeah. being distracted with trying to serve you know, a bunch of different communities via one product group. Um, the, the text that Antonio and, and Jensen shared, Jensen sent this morning, and he said, I want a Tiger team pulled together. Uh, he sent it to our head of sales, myself, a couple of my peers, um, and said, let's get a Tiger team together and figure out the next 90 days. I want to yeah. know every go-to-market activity. Yeah. And so uh, he's a genius at, at pulling that together and, and holding us accountable. Um, there'll, be, there'll be joint go-to-market campaigns that we do together. Yeah. Uh, we'll be making sure that their customer briefing centers are fully equipped with yeah. our technology. Um, our, our sales force, which is much, much smaller than their sales force, yeah. uh, will be working with them on Fortune 1000 accounts. But it'll be a, a detailed plan that Jensen wants to view on a regular basis, and I'm sure with Antonio. Awesome. So. That's great. Being in the Valley for 25 years, I can tell you, personally, been following Jensen's career going back, and I know a lot of the dynamics. He's got a, um, he's an entrepreneur. I think he really respects, and I saw a little bit on stage, the, the, the genuflected to HP's culture, and he's a systems guy, HP's a technical company. Um, I think it's a good fit, and congratulations on yeah, the uh, relationship. Yeah. Well, we're excited yeah. to be working Thanks. with the best partner in this yeah. space, yeah. and yeah. Uh, excited Same to here. bring that value Same to here. our customers. And we're timing the CEOs on keynotes, we're yeah. going to see how they do around <laughs> yeah. the track. You know, their tech athletes want to see their speed, Dave, we're going to track it. All right, you watch the theCUBE here, bring all the action. NVIDIA and HP in a really monumental partnership. We're going to keep tracking it here on theCUBE. We're bringing all you the data here. We got our own NIM. It's called theCUBE Data. Stay with us for more after this short break.